Hello and welcome to the University of Manchester's Results Day Live. Congratulations to everyone who's received results either today or over the past few weeks. You should be so proud of yourself. And if you're coming to Manchester, I hope you have the best time here. I'm Jacob and I'm going into my second year studying history and French. Over the next hour or so, I'll be chatting to students, answering your questions, showcasing our city, campus and much more to celebrate you starting university here at Manchester. We're also running a competition over the course of our live and on our social media. So when you see Barnaby, our B mascot, which first of all, I had no clue how to name, comment Barnaby as fast as you can in our comments and you'll be entered into a competition to win a personalized mug just like this one. Well, not with my face. You probably don't want that one. Remember, if you have any questions, don't forget to comment them and I'll try and answer them over the course of the next hour or so. But before all of that, we have a welcome message from our Vice-Chancellor, Nancy, Roth Nancy Rothwell. I'm joined now by Ikra, who's just graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Speech and Language Therapy. Hello. Hi, yeah. Like you said, I'm Ikra Malik. Hi. Um, happy results day. I mean, for you, I said this earlier, I don't want to make you feel old, but mm -hmm. you've just graduated, started in 2020. I do. do you remember your results day? Yeah, so my results day was the probably a really non-traditional one. So I was affected by the pandemic. So my results consisted of opening the email at home and then going for a picnic with my friends because yeah. that was the only thing we could do. Of course, because of the lockdown restrictions yeah. and everything. Were you excited to come to Manchester? I was so excited. I, I So my sister had just been here. She was the only one in the family that had been to the University of Manchester um, and she absolutely loved it. She was like the main reason that I applied here. Um, so yeah, I was so excited the fact that I got in. Um, it was a bit bittersweet because I was the only one out of my friends to get in. So oh, the really? picnic was a bit... As in, so you, were your friends all planning on coming to Manchester? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. how was your first week then without that group of friends? Did you make any friends in the first week? How was your first week? What was your first week like? Um, so again, pandemic. So it was online, it was on Zoom. But I was really lucky that um, a girl I met during my interview, um, we stayed friends and we're still like best friends now. Really? Yeah, so we stayed friends. We found each other in like the Zoom call and then we privately messaged each other. And then now we're literally best friends, so we ended up staying friends. So I was really lucky in that case, yeah. Would you change anything about your first week? Um, Apart from maybe the yeah, lockdown kind of situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, in not just the first week, but my general first year, I wish I was more confident in uh -huh. terms of like asking for like, even not even just for help, just like general questions during lectures, like where I was a bit confused. I think it's a lot, it can feel intimidating because there's a lot more people yeah. than what you're used to. But I feel like by second and third year, it's the most normal thing ever. Like you do grow out of that, but I guess I wish I just did it a bit sooner. Yeah, so would you say your step up to undergrad, especially undergrad, especially studying something like speech and language therapy, which I suppose you can't really do at school in mm. any way. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Did you adjust well? I suppose you were saying about your first week and your first year, it took a little bit of time to understand how everything worked, what would you say? Yeah, exactly like you said, it took a bit of time adjusting, also getting used to the fact how varied modules can be. Oh because my God, you tell think me you're studying yeah. one course and you just think, all right, so the modules are all gonna link to each other, it'll be very similar, but you end up doing the most extreme. So I went from like doing like one linguistics module to like biomedical sciences, like straight after each other and I was just like, like what is this jump? Yeah. Um, and so it's really difficult, especially at A levels, you've specialized in like three to four different subjects. Then you go to university thinking, I'm doing one, but you actually end up looking at so much more. Yeah. So I think just getting, like, adjusting to that was really difficult. Yeah, are you a science sort of person? Nope. Really? <laughs> <laughs> My, I've favored more, 
It's funny, I ended up doing better in the science modules, but I did favour like linguistics, English, like that was more my specialty. Yeah. Um, would you say that's one of your highlights then? Maybe finding your love for linguistics? Love, maybe, is that too strong a love word? Is a love yeah. is a reach. Um, but I think my actual highlight of university was placement. So, oh, really? So even though I stayed at home for university, I didn't move out, I got to move out for placement. So I think I spent this year, I was in Liverpool for like three months. I was staying there um, doing placement. I was working in different schools with neurodivergent children, which was amazing. Um, I think, yeah, definitely my highlight was just placement. And if you do a degree with placement, you just get to work in the field and you're treated like, you know, you've graduated, you're working. So that for me was definitely the highlight because I was treated like a proper speech therapist. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, and it was amazing. So that experience was definitely like the highlight. I know people who've graduated who say doing either a study abroad or doing a placement year is quite possibly one of the best things they've done because mm -hmm. diversifying your skills from not just the only the educational side, but the vocational or practical side of a degree is really important as well. So I'm glad Definitely. you enjoyed your placement. You mentioned that you stayed at home for university. What was that like? Because I know some people have a lot of worries about they think they're going to miss out on the experience in halls. Mm -hmm. How did you find that? I suppose everyone's at home anyway because of lockdown in first year, but how did you find that over the course of your degree? I think it's literally a case of the grass is always green on the other side. Like you'll meet people in halls that are like, oh God, I miss home so much. I wish I was just at home having yeah. home cooked food. And then you'll meet people living at home that are like, oh, I wish I moved out. Like I don't have as much freedom. It's one of those things, just make do with what you've got. Like at the end of the day, you're at university and that is an experience that like everyone's is so different. So make the most out of it. Like. And also getting over like FOMO, like that whole fear of missing out, like it's okay if you don't take part in some things, like university is so different for everyone. I feel like it was really hard for me to initially in my first year see people living in halls and like, you know, they were going out every day and it was just so, like it looked like a lot of fun, but I guess everyone's going through their own things. So I honestly like, I do not regret staying at home throughout my degree. I got some experience on placement, but I definitely think living at home was easier like I got to go home and my mum would cook for me yeah and I didn't have to pay rent you didn't have to pay rent you just so, have to do your own washing I did nothing yeah so, and I still do nothing so <laughs> it has its plus. benefits yeah. did you how did you make friends because I know a lot of people think that halls is the only way to make friends mm. so what were your other ways of making friends I mean that's definitely not the case I and mean, when I was living in halls in Liverpool for placement um I didn't make friends with anyone that I lived with because oh, really? I didn't like anyone. They, were not, they just were not yeah. clean people. Um, so I think making friends, joining societies, even like when you're studying on campus, like I know people are like intimidated, but when you're sat next to someone, sometimes you just naturally end up having a conversation. Yeah. Like I feel like don't be scared to like just talk to people, like especially the first week, everyone is just as nervous as each other. Um, so making friends like on your degree program, joining societies, just taking part in like the university offers so many like, extracurricular yeah. stuff. So doing things like that, you naturally end up making friends. I don't think it's something you have to seek. Like it just ends up happening. Yeah, it happens quite naturally. I yeah. think you're exposed, not even if you didn't join any societies or mm. do any sports or find a part-time job or anything like that, mm -hmm. even with your degree, you are exposed to so many people. Yeah, so I think you just have to grasp it, take it in your stride, put on a brave face because everyone's faking it in their first week. Definitely. I'm sure you can back me up on that. first year, everyone's faking it. Everyone's that. faking <laughs> it, so you don't need to worry. Um, and finally, what's your favourite place in Manchester to go for food? Bit of a random question, but okay. I feel like as a, as a Manchester local, mm -hmm. You probably have some good places. Maybe maybe give me, you know, a few. Okay, right. God, you've put me on the spot. I'm trying to think. So I am a massive fan of um, the Curry Mile. Windsor yeah, 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 yeah. And it's right near the uni as well. So oh, it I feel is, like, isn't it? Yeah. But through studying here, you end up there like every day. Exactly. Like, I, well, I if, did. Yeah, if you live in Fallowfield as well, you're going past it literally, every day. Literally, yeah. I don't know if I was the problem or if something else, but I was literally there every single day. <laughs> I recommend Jaffa's, really okay. good food. Um, or there's so many dessert places. I feel like every time you walk past, like a new food shop's opened up. Yeah, so, I find that just generally anywhere. in Manchester, there's always something opening. Literally. Not just food, but just everywhere. There's a new shop, there's a new food place, new yeah. art institution. Yeah. Like every time you go on TikTok, there's like a random new restaurant. Like I'll just find a place and I'll go and try it. So I yeah. went and tried um, Gooey, like I kept seeing it Oh, on I've seen them on TikTok. Didn't Lizzo so, like, get a PR package or something from I, Gooey? Yeah, yeah. She, she loved it. Which is so random. Yeah. But yeah, I went to Gooey. The cookies were like fat. So I feel like in Manchester, your favourite food place is literally going to change yeah. every week because you just end up like 
There's You'll so find many somewhere. Spots. You'll definitely find somewhere. Well, there you go. Go to the Curry Mile and listen to Lizzo about Gooey. Thanks, Ikra. So Thank we've you. got loads more content coming up for you, including a quiz, a DJ set, and some more interviews. So do stick around. Now, though, we'd like to cut to our roaming reporter from the university's student TV channel, Fuse TV, Aidan Road, who earlier asked students around Manchester to help him fill in a Manchester-themed crossword puzzle. Trust me, it's a lot, lot more fun than it sounds. I'm here at Manchester University with the latest issue of the Mancunian newspaper which has a Manchester-themed crossword in it. And I'm going to test today the knowledge of Manchester University students to see how well they know the city that they live in. Welcome back to this episode of Roadwise. Is anybody not going to a lecture and has five minutes for a crossword? How's your Manchester knowledge? Not good. Good. Crossword? <laughs> nope. Is there any questions about Harry Styles? Because I can answer this. There are none about Harry Styles. He's not a famous Mancunian, I'm afraid to oh, say. Okay. It isn't actually even a kilometre long. Uh, Curry Mile. Curry Mile is correct. Meteorological phenomenon that Manchester is renowned for. The Hubble Telescope, is it? Um, rain. Rain is correct. Do you know who the mayor of Greater Manchester is? No, not good. He's Labour. Yes, he is. Oh, God, I should know. Um, he's like Andy something. Andy is his first name. It's like if you're t roasting uh, some pig. Roasting some pig? Burnham. Oh, Burnham. Incumbent Mayor Andy Burnham. Andam Burnham. Andam. Andam, the great man. <laughs> the great man indeed. He was at the Student Union the other day. Did you see? Yeah, he's a lovely guy. I asked him if he liked the Style Council and he said, yeah, kind of. Yeah. The author of a fairly well-known manifesto that was primarily written in the Central Library. Marx. Karl Marx, indeed. He wrote it here? He wrote the Communist Manifesto in the Central Library. What? Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. Crossword? That's all right. You hear him before you see him. He's an iconic figure, often seen on a on a bicycle or electric scooter, blasting the tunes oh, down Oxford Road. The radio guy. Yeah. Fifty cent. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fifty cent. Yeah, fifty cent frequents the University of Manchester <laughs> campus. Does he have a name? Yeah. Well, obviously he has a name. Well, he's got a, he's name? got like a moniker that people call. I don't know if it's his actual name. Um, speaker guy. Yeah. Oh, I know him. I don't know his name. You don't, oh, you don't know his name? No, what is his name? Boombox Barry. Oh, I did know that. Blank Rothwell. She's the Chancellor of the University. Oh, Nancy. Nancy Rothwell is correct. The one and only. Palace, Palace of Manchester. Crystal. Crystal. You got Palace. It's in the Northern Quarter. Oh. I see things. I don't yeah. know the names of things. <laughs> it's famous for having like goth shops and oh, funky oh, stuff. Oh, um, Affleck. Affleck's Palace. Oh my god. Are you a frequent Crystal. consumer of Affleck's goods? Um, it's quite expensive. Yeah. I like to walk around it though. Oh my god. You wrote this, didn't you? I did, I did make this. That's very cool. Thank you. But how about the popular soft drink that was invented in Manchester? Vimto. Vimto is correct. Vimto? It's like a Ribena it's sort of thing. thing. You never see it, but a load no. of the Milton Keynes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sweating, this is a lot of pressure now. Do you know the name of Manchester's basketball team? Oh no. It's named after very large mythical beings. It's the Giants. No. I don't think anybody knows that no. to be fair. Crossword? Fresher's favourite nightclub in town. Factory, Factory is, is correct. Factory's yeah. Favorite. With Fresher's, and then they sort of wake up and realise that it's exactly. not really that good. <laughs> it is Factory. <laughs> what a horrid ball. <laughs> Manchester University's sworn enemies. Man Met. Man, it's got to be Man Met. I'm like Manchester Met. So oh, you're at Man Met. <laughs> yeah, that was that one. We don't like to to touch on. Yeah touch on that for too long. Do you ever find yourself in the Students' Union? Sometimes, yeah. Do you know what the name of the building is called? It's named after a guy called Steve, right as you walk in. Oh. It's the Steve something Who building. Comes? Steve Scott Buttons. No. Steve what? It starts with a B. B, 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 B. Union. No. no. <laughs> All right, I'd say we're maybe halfway done. Can we finish the crossword before the rain comes in? That is the question. Oh, you know the Stopford building? How would you describe its roof? Tall, big, flat, brown. Flat. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Supine position that many students find themselves in during the summer in Platfields. Supine, Supine just means flat. Lying down. Lying down <laughs> is correct. I was like, what? I've never been to Platfields. Really? Yeah, shocking. What about the home of famous two for one meals? Oh, crowbar. Crowbar it is. On my way there right now. Are you? What are you going to get? No idea. Okay. Mancunian band comprising of Bucket Hat Sporting Brothers. Is that 
the Happy Mondays? Oasis. Oasis, famously from Manchester. <laughs> Enigmatic Allen. Correct. The name of the university's student radio and TV station. Oh, Fuse. Fuse. What, what's the clue for that one again? Name name of the university's oh. student radio and TV station. Fuse, Fuse TV Fuse and radio. TV. Oh. Are we on Fuse? Yeah. Yes, you are. Oh, wow, hello. One across, the city that was nicknamed Cottonopolis in the 19th century. Hey, I'm not in the 19th century, mate. The clue, the clue is the theme of the crossword. Manchester. Manchester Whoa, is the correct let's go. It ties the whole puzzle together. <laughs> Thank you very much for your help, my sir. Very nice to see you again. Appreciate it. Yeah. There we go. That's the crossword, complete. Yay. Thank you for your help. That's all right. If you guys want to take a copy of the Mancunian, this crossword is, is in there. Thanks for Thanks so smashing much. it with us. Nice no problem. Again. Good to see Can you we again. we get to plug stuff? Oh yeah, you can plug stuff as much as you want. Um, follow you. Well, there we go. We have ourselves a finished crossword. Make sure to pick up yourself a fresh copy of the Mancunian newspaper where you can find this very crossword yourself and maybe this video helps you solve it. Make sure to subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Personally think I would have been absolutely hopeless, but there you go. Remember, whenever you see our university mascot, which is a bee called Barnaby, um, pop up, make sure to comment Barnaby as quickly as you can to win a personalized, the chance to win a personalized mug just like this one. There will also be other opportunities to win over on our social media. So make sure to check out our Instagram story and we'll also be live on TikTok at 2.45. Both are at official URM. I'm now here with Tabitha, who's also just graduated, Hello. this time with a degree in politics. Hello. Yes. Hello. Do you remember your results day? Yes, actually, I do. So it was quite similar to Ikra. I w it was locked down and I was at home and I had to check on uh, a website. And um, I felt a bit nervous. I was very nervous that morning. Um, and I feel like you're more nervous when you're actually waiting for the results yeah. rather than taking the exam. But it was, well, it was uh, great. It all worked out. Yeah, it all, wor all worked out in the end, which was great. Did you manage to do anything on results day? Um, well, I was at home with my family, so that was quite nice. Yeah. And after that, I just uh, spent some time with my friends uh, when it was possible, so that was okay. And were you, what were you most worried about the mo with the move to university? Because I know some people are worried about making friends, some people are w worried about moving away from home, some people are worried about their degree. What would you say was your biggest worry? I think it was mainly related to my degree and probably making friends because especially when you're moving countries, I'm from Romania. When I f uh, first came to the UK, it's quite a big shock because yeah. there are different cultures. Um, but um, especially because my first year, even though I was in Manchester, it was national lockdown. So everything was closed. It was so hard yeah. to like make a connection with someone. And I remember that when we had like tutorials on Zoom or um, lectures, uh, everybody was just with their camera off and yeah. uh, uh, probably everybody was like, um, struggled a bit to make friends and stuff like that but I think um, for my second year it was way better it was my second freshers week yeah I can so, imagine yeah. so it was uh, it was quite nice um, I was able to come on campus uh, every single day and uh, um, especially if you go to lectures and tutorials you're kind of able to to meet a lot of people um, and because you're doing similar stuff and you have similar interests it's kind of uh, easier to make a connection with someone which was great yeah so would you say from second year it was way obviously yeah with lo lockdown it was quite difficult mm -hmm. to make friends but from second year would you say you found it easier to make easy to make friends at university yeah it was easier just because you could have also go I don't know get uh, go to the student union and um, um, go to like societies events uh, or socials or just being on campus and like meeting people everywhere I think uh, that makes it makes it easier when you're at home on your computer yeah. and all you're doing is like uh, lectures on zoom it's very difficult to like find exactly. someone. Exactly. I feel like Ikra was very brave yeah. messaging that person who she's friends with still yeah. now. Um, but yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad it all worked out in the end. So you mentioned you're from Romania. Yeah. Were there any culture shocks when you came to the UK? Because I know I was speaking to an international student um, who said meal deals were mm. quite a shock for her. What would you, what would you say? Well, meal deals for sure. I never understood the purpose of meal deals, but everybody just had, had one. Um, and uh, I, I know that there were all these uh, like 
inside jokes about the meal deal if you get like i don't know a very expensive thing yeah, but yeah, if yeah. it's in the meal deal it's like um, a bargain or something yeah. which was uh, quite funny but i think for me because i come from a small city from romania just to see uh, a big city like manchester and to see so many things that you can do here um like places to go bookshops loads of uh, loads of things that you can do on a night out and stuff like that and that was quite nice yeah um so i think that was one of the biggest differences but also to see how big the campus is uh, at yeah. the university. I know that a lot of um, uh, uh, prospective students who came uh, for their open day, they weren't expe they didn't expect for the campus to be that big, uh, which was quite exciting. I mean, yeah. you, you have loads of space, green space everywhere to sit around and hang out with your friends, which is it's very, very nice. Yeah, when I came on my offer holder open day, I can completely agree with you with the size <laughs> of the campus. I didn't actually see the whole campus because we're going to get onto this later, but I don't think it rains as much as people think in Manchester, but we'll talk about that later. Maybe a tad controversial. I, when I arrived in September, I was like, what on earth? This campus is huge. And then you get yeah. used to it and it becomes slightly smaller. But yeah, the green spaces completely agree with you yeah. with everything you said about the campus. I have to disagree about the rain. It rains a lot. For me, when I... I, I suppose for yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, for me, when I came here, I used to love rain in Romania and I, I was actually looking forward to it. But now I'm like, please, no. no. I just want a bit of sun. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm, I beg to differ, <laughs> okay. but there we go. So what would you say would be your top tip for students? You've mentioned about kind of joining societies and taking advantage of being exposed yeah. to new people but anything else would you say is something maybe you wish you knew I think I think um it's quite natural to be within your comfort zone and uh, maybe it can be daunting for some people, especially if you're an international student. Uh, it can be daunting to form connections with people or just go to random events and stuff like that. But I feel like, um, especially my second year when I, um, I was on campus and I was going to lectures and seminars, um, what I found very useful is to actually use all the resources that I have at university and uh, go to office hours if I have a question or go and talk to someone like a colleague from, from the same course to talk about my essay plan. Um, I found that to be very, very useful. And I was I regretted that I didn't do that in my first year. I mean, it was also lockdown, so it was quite yeah. difficult to, to do it then. But I feel like if you're starting from your first year to kind of build, build that connections with your academic advisor, with your lecturers, because you're probably going to see them um, in, your, uh, in your future courses as well, if you're kind of doing the same thing. So um, I think just getting out of your comfort zone and don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to go to office hours and make use of all the resources you have available at university. Because sometimes you just get to your third year and you realize, oh, there's so many things I could have done and I just didn't. So don't live with regret, just, <laughs> just yeah. do it. No, I know, I completely agree with you. There are so many spaces on the campus I haven't explored in this building. Humanities Bridge for Street. Yeah. There is study spaces downstairs. I've only been to this building once. So, you know, I completely agree with you. We've just had a question from Samira who's asked, how does she spend her free time on campus? Is the campus very beautiful? What would you say? It is very beautiful. It's, and it's not only about the size. It's like you have loads of uh, coffee shops. You have uh, the bookshop Blackwells. I just love spending time there. It's it's a very nice spot. Um, and uh, as you said, like just going around the buildings, you can find buildings like this one, which uh, have like fun stuff in them. And you're from the outside. Yeah. You go, this doesn't look uh, as nice as I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should not. Speak <laughs> like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, if you go to the engineering building, look, like, that's that's a very nice spot to hang out. Uh, with your friends. Um, I really like main library. I'm kind of old school. I really like the old vibes of the building. I have to agree with you. And um, I, especially during exam period, when you see everybody that's doing stuff, if it's kind of motivated, so that's my place to go. AGLC is quite nice. So there's like, even in, in, uh, in universities buildings, it's quite nice to spend time uh, with your friends, which is, which is great. But um, around campus, I would say Blackwells, that's my favorite spot, or uh, around that area uh, near AMBS, the, yeah. the business school. I think that's a, that's a nice spot to hang out. I think that's what shocked me is that you can literally just go into any building yeah. and use it. I'm a big fan of the engineering building. If I don't need to necessarily concentrate and have it super silent, 
because there's just so much space. The light is really good yeah. in the yeah. engineering building. What's your favorite zone in the library? I feel like this is a good question. Um, well, I used to, in my second year, I used to go to Muriel Stott. I really okay. like that because, you know, it's like that, um, it's like a, a quite hidden from the main library. Oh, okay. So you have yeah, to yeah. go outside and then enter oh, okay. it. Have you been there? No, I don't you think should, so. You should Thanks see for another, the tip. Yeah, yeah, another tip. Um, Muriel Stott, but then in my third year, I just like to hang out in uh, Blue One. So in yeah. blue, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I really like that space in the plugging zones. I'm sorry. Are you not a fan of purple, which looks a bit like Hogwarts? Mm, I don't like spending the line there. I don't know why. It's I just quite like warm though, one. isn't it? I found it quite warm, but I feel like blue one. You have access to the uh, water fountain and you have access to the toilet, so it's like a smarter decision. Okay. Don't you think? It's like mm. more strategic. No, okay. Back to differ again. Okay. Especially about the rain as well. It's good that we disagree. I mean, people yeah. have different perspectives. Exactly. On the same and thing. the campus is so big, yeah. so you'll definitely be bound to find your favorite study spot. Um, would you, did you join any societies? Did you join any sports? Yes, so um, I joined the Italian society actually because I also speak Italian, so uh -huh. I wanted to practice my Italian. I think that's such a nice thing to do while you're at university, just if you have like, um, uh, I don't know, a language that you want to um, improve or I don't know, anything else. I mean, you can find the society for anything really. If you go to the Students Union website and you have all them, uh, all of them listed there. But I went to the Italian society because they offered free Italian lessons. Oh, wow. So each week in my second year, I went to uh, to those lessons and it's been great. It improved my, uh, my Italian skills a lot, which I really, I didn't expect it because you kind of think of it as being uh, casual and not really helpful yeah. so you m most people will think oh it's just a waste of time but no it's, it was actually very very nice yeah I think it's great that a university I wish if I didn't do a language already for my degree I do French I think I would have picked up another language because yeah. you can do it as part of the society but I think what's it called there's um a part of the school of arts languages and cultures yeah. which does yeah. courses for anyone in the university and also i think the general public where yeah. you can just pick up another language so i think that's great thanks so much i've learned a lot i mean we had a little bit of disagreement yeah. about the rain and about favorite study sports but you know begs to differ yeah it's fine <laughs> <laughs> we're now going to go to two quick tours with tim who's been in charge of sending you all the welcome emails so it's nice to put a face to the name we'll be showing you around the city first of all and then our campus so take a look hi i'm tim i came to manchester four years ago to study and here's a quick tour of my favorite places in manchester if there's one thing Manchester's famous for, it's music. We've produced Oasis, The Stone Roses, The 1975, the list goes on. And there's loads of great venues in the city to listen. I'm out here outside the O2 Ritz, a former ballroom that's been converted into one of my favourite venues in the city. Here in Manchester, it's not hard to find good food. And one of the city's most famous places is the Curry Mile here in Russia. It's got some of the best South Asian food in the city, as well as other cuisines like the Birria Tacos at Don Tacos. Canal Street is at the heart of the city's gay village. Its famous strip of bars and clubs provides amazing entertainment seven nights a week. And in August, it's the centerpiece of the brilliant Manchester Pride. Manchester has always been a city that prides itself on its learning, innovation and culture. As such, it plays host to loads of amazing institutions like Manchester Central Library, the Whitworth Art Gallery, and the Science and Industry Museum. And how can you talk about Manchester without talking about football? Not only is it home to the National Football Museum, but it's also home to two of the biggest football teams in the world, City and United. But if football's not your thing, don't worry. We've also got one of the biggest cricket grounds in the country and two professional rugby teams. Manchester is right on the edge of the Peak District if you want to get out of the city and experience nature. But you don't have to get out of the city to do so. This is Mayfield Park. It opened in 2022 as the city's first new public park in over 100 years. And if all that's not enough for you, Manchester is one of the best connected cities in the country with direct trains to places like Liverpool, London and Glasgow. And there's the free bus from the station to take you around the city. That's been my whistle stop tour of things to do in Manchester, but there's so much more. Let us know in the comments your favourite things to do in the city and help someone new discover Manchester. Hi, I'm Tim and welcome to a campus tour of the University of Manchester. We thought we'd start with the iconic Arch, one of the most Instagrammable places on campus and where you'll probably get your photo taken when you graduate. 
This is the main quadrangle, the central hub of the university. Behind me, you've got the main library, and at the other end, you've got the Alan Gilbert Learning Commons, or, as it's called by students, the Alley G. The main library is a little bit more traditional, but the Alley G is a little bit more modern, and it has things like sleeping pods and collects its own water. This is the old quadrangle of the university, a little bit less lively than the new quadrangle, but just as good looking. This was the main centre of the university when it was first created in 1824. This is Brunswick Park, another central area of the university. It's where most seminars and tutorials tend to take place, and down there is Bonugo Cafe, a student favourite. This is University Place, one of the newer buildings at the university. The ground floor has a food market and the university shop, whilst upstairs there are some of the biggest teaching spaces at the university. This is University Green, right next to the business school. With restaurants like Five Guys, Navarro Lounge and Brewdog, it's a student favourite on a Friday afternoon. This is Alliance Manchester Business School, or AMBS for short. It's one of the newest buildings on campus and has loads of study spaces. It's also right across from the Graduate Bar. This is our state-of-the-art engineering building. It's got study spaces, lecture theatres, workshop and its own cafe. As you can probably tell, it's absolutely massive! This is Academy One, one of three live music venues attached to our Students' Union, which is just down the road. The Students' Union is a great place to hang out in between lectures with all its food vendors, as well as participate in student activities like student radio and student TV. Now it is time for a quiz. I'm glad I'm not the one answering the questions. I'm joined again with Ikra and Tabata, and I'm also joined by, with Dara, who will I'll be chatting to you a little bit later. Our first question, are you ready, first of all? Yeah. Yes, you can pretend so you're on University ready. Challenge, but I promise you the questions aren't as difficult. Okay, the first question is, and also feel free to play along at home. The first question is, it's time to learn some essential local lingo before you arrive. If I ask for a balm in Manchester, what am I asking for? Please, Ikra, don't, I, I know you're a Manchester I'm native. I'm from Manchester, so I'm so, not gonna answer. No, but do, do answer, okay. but don't look at me like, I'm, I feel like I'm butchering the pronunciation of that. Okay. Um, you're, go you're good. Okay, cool. So the um, A is a kiss, B is a bread roll, and C is a favor. So I'm asking, if I ask for a balm in Manchester, what am I asking for? A is a kiss, B is a bread roll, and C is a favor. Have you all thought of your answer? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna ask Ikra to go last. Yeah, please. Yeah. Dara, do you wanna go first? What do oh, you think? Oh no, is it a bread roll? Okay. I would say the same, a bread roll. Ikra, what's the answer? It's a bread roll. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. Do you guys have any of your own Mancunianisms? Anything you think that the locals say? Ikra, I think you'll- Well, as a local. <laughs> yeah, as a local. As the local herself. Um, I say like, See, I don't even know if it's like Manchester slang or is it just the way I speak. I say like mint quite a lot. Mm. Like something's mint. Do you know what that means? Like if mm. I say something's like mint. Like it was nice, mint. like it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah mint. Yeah. I feel like that's quite a British thing. Is that a British thing? I don't know, but I know what, I, exa when you said that, I know exactly what you mean. I don't really know any Mancunianisms. So yeah, I, my mum said- I'll take the credit for it. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe just pretend you invented it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and my mum said to me, she lived in Manchester um, when she was doing her degree, just for a year. Mm. And she said, correct me if I'm wrong, when someone from Manchester asks if they want a tea or a coffee, if you want a tea or a coffee, they say, do you want a drink? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Which oh, she was so quite true. surprised about, because obviously if someone, usually when someone asks, do you want a drink, they mean, well, typically they mean, do you want an alcoholic drink? Mm. Yeah, So, yeah. I don't know, that was, that surprised That's so me. That's because you said drink and my mind went straight to like tea, coffee. Oh, interesting, yeah. there you go. So it's not, don't, all right, I'm actually gonna not have to, I can't look at you when I, I have a few more to, to say. Okay. So it's not all about bombs, ginnels, or chuddy. Did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Around here though, Manchester is proudly one of the most multicultural cities in the UK. Can you guess how many languages are spoken here? So A is 50, B is 175, and C is 200. So the question is, Manchester is one of the most multicultural cities in the UK. Can you guess how many languages are spoken here? A is 50, B is 175, and C is 200. Have you all had a time to have a little thing? Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's start with Ikra first. I shouldn't have said yeah, because I don't believe any of them. Mm. Really? You think, like, you think I'm trying to trick I you? I think trick does. Okay. Because 50 is... It's 50 and then it jumps to like 175, so I'm, mm. I don't trust you. Okay. If I'm you gonna have, say none. Okay, you're gonna say none? Yes. I'll accept that. Tabitha? 
I would say um, 200, see, because I do think Manchester is a, a very big city and we have loads of languages. Yeah. And there was also a project at university about multilingual Manchester. Oh, really? Yes, so I will take an educated guess and say, see. Okay, so that's, the, that's some thought into that answer. And Dara? I'm just going to say 175 because it's a random number. Mm. <laughs> okay, right, the correct answer is, if you're playing along at home, is 200. Nice. So, nice yeah, it's an international city. So you mentioned you speak, speak Romanian, you speak Italian, you speak English. Yes. Do you speak any other languages? No, that's all. Three of them. Does anyone else speak I'm any impressed. other languages? I'm curious. Yeah, I speak English, Spanish, and I guess Trinidadian Creole. Yeah. Yeah, um, I speak English, Urdu, Punjabi, Hindi, and I throw Spanish words into sentences <laughs> like I can speak Spanish. like. Senorita. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say like casa instead of house and feel like I'm fluent. Yeah. So I'm going to say I'm that. fluent in Spanish as well. Oh, look at that. Okay. So the next question is Manchester is a city of firsts. It was the first industrial city, the place where the professional football league was created, the filming location for the first ever episode of Top of the Pops. But the question is. Ernest Rutherford also made a pretty important first when working at the university in 1917, but what was it? So A is he was the first person to split the atom, B is he was the first person to discover graphene, and C was he was the first person to invent the computer. Okay, should I read that one again? Because I feel like that's a lot of words, yeah. lots of process. Go for it. So I'm looking for what Ernest Rutherford um, made he made a pretty important first. What did he invent? What did he create? What did he discover when working at the university in 1917? So was he the first person to split the atom? Was he the first person to discover graphene? Or was he the person who invented the first computer? Mm. It's not the atom. Sorry, can we like discuss? Um, no. No, we can't discuss. Listen, okay. This just, is a competition. I, I just watched realize... Oppenheimer and okay. the atom thing happened there. Oh, okay. So can I rule that out? But that's oh, that's one. Think in your heads, guys, because I'm Sorry. I'm trying to make this a competition. Even though I've literally forgotten yeah. who got. Yeah, I'm a group I, work sort of person. I oh, really okay. Yeah, I like talking. <laughs> Try and in a ch channel your inner competitive okay. side. It was graph. You know what the computer? Oh, you sort the options: atom, atom, uh, graphene, or the first computer. Is it the first computer? I think it's the first. Mm. Okay, is it? Has everyone thought? I can hear brains yeah. wiring. Yeah. Like this is. I think I'd probably get this wrong. Harder than my degree. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is where you're really being tested. Yeah. Not your yeah, degree, but really. a, a quiz. Right? Are we ready? Yes, yeah, okay. I'm ready. Okay, Dara, should I start with you? Yeah, I'm gonna go with the computer. Okay. You didn't sound very confident. <laughs> right. okay. I think you're just taking guesses for yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. I like that. She's here for the vibes. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, Ikra? The graphene one. Okay, and Tabata? I would say uh, the atom. Oh, we've got a mixed bag. So the answer is he was the first person to split the atom. So nice. Tabata got that right. Nice. Okay, never mind. But you weren't far off because the other two firsts also happened at the university. Yeah. So there you go. That's why I got yeah. confused. Okay. Alan Turing, the computer one, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah I think so. I'm sorry, ruled that out. No. Educated guesses. There we go. She's too smart. <laughs> yeah, can we kick her She's out? She's actually yeah. using her brain. I'm going off movie knowledge and you're just... I'm just, just here. Like, I'm just here. here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is a question for you, Ikra. So, sport is at the heart of Manchester's identity. The city's Old Trafford cricket ground was the venue for last month's fourth Ashes Test and the city hosted the final of the Rugby League World Cup just last year. But Manchester is most famous for its two football teams, Manchester City and Manchester United. Mm -hmm. But can you tell me who finished higher in the league last year? So, was it Manchester City, Manchester United, or neither? Um, you lost me there. You've got me. Don't okay, worry. right, right. We're gonna, we're me. just gonna, Chris just gonna pretend she doesn't know anything about football and we're gonna let Dara and yeah, Tabata deliver it. I'm just gonna read it out again because it's a lot of words, isn't it? Manchester is most famous for its two football teams, Manchester City and Manchester United. But can you tell me who finished higher in the league last year? It's either Manchester City, Manchester United, or neither of the teams. Oh, good Manchester City. I'll Manch give you guys a clue. Think about the word league. Manchester United. Okay, so you're going to go Manchester United. Dara, what are you going to go with? I already gave my answer. Sorry, I'm not gonna matter. What's your answer? Yeah, I'll go to you. Okay. I know it's wrong, but it's fine. 
What's your answer, Ekra? So, guys, I'm a really big football fan. I'm a very big Manchester City fan. So I'm very happy to say Manchester City. Okay. I don't want to start don't a fight here. Don't tell me I'm wrong. But don't tell me I'm wrong. It's actually kind of a trick question. Mm. So the word league, obviously, it doesn't really refer. It's just general, the word league. So you're right with the fact that City won the Premier League, yes, but yes. United finished higher in the Women's Super League. So they cancel each other out. So technically, it's neither. You got me there. I mean, I didn't write these questions, and I feel like I'm just... I'm, I feel like I still... There's a point in yeah, that. Yeah, I feel like I'll give you a point there's for a point, that. Yeah. yeah. Not that we're counting, but if we are counting, yeah. there's a point. While you answer the next thing about the next question, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and remember who's <laughs> winning. So, actually, I'm just curious. Have you seen any city games? Yeah, I go to most. Of them. Yeah, I go to a lot. Um, we won the Super Cup last night. Mm-hmm. Round from a team. Yeah. So yeah, love City. Tabitha should know. I feel like you should know because I'm. We work together, so yeah. I'm always talking about City. But I don't know if you probably listen to anything at all. Quite say. blankly, yeah. yeah she's like, like, it goes in one ear, out the other. She zones me out, but that's fine. But yeah. Have you seen any sports whilst you're here, Dara? No. 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 Sorry to disappoint. No, not at all. I haven't either. Though I saw when. What's the blue one? City. City. There we go. I, knew that I saw. Um, it's by like the street that if you have to walk to Manchester Victoria from Manchester Piccadilly, that street where City I mean, won and all the celebration. Perfect. I wasn't here, but I saw a lot of videos on social yeah. media. So. I literally was there, and then someone interviewed me, and then I ended up on like this Twitter page, and all my friends were sending me it, and it was a bit embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, she's a loyal City supporter. Very loyal. There you go. That's what you've learned from from the quiz. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> else. It's just, just a loyal City supporter. So I've got the last question for you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if this is deciding question because I can't remember what points you're all on, but it's non-competitive, or is it? Anyway, so Manchester was recently voted one of the top 15 cities in the world by Time Out magazine. There's your source. Um, But there's another statistic we're even more proud of. Can you fill in the blank? So the blank is Manchester is the what city in England? Rainiest is not one of them. (laughs) So we, we can't have an argument. So A is prettiest. B is busiest and C is friendliest. Mm. C, sorry. Okay, so you want to C. That's sold about the friendliness. Yeah. yeah. That's such a good like impression of Manchester. Yeah, I love Manchester. Yeah, what would you say, Akra? Options, busiest, friendliest. Prettiest, busiest, friendliest. And Manchester is the what city in England according to Time Out magazine. Okay, I'm trying to be like Tabitha. Like I know it can't be the busiest, but prettiest, it's mm. gorgeous. But maybe there's pretty. Yeah, friendliest. I feel like people here are so, so friendly. Yeah, I'll go with friendliest as well. You're all right. Yay. <laughs> what do you guys think about the weather? I'm actually going to have to bring it back because <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm, we can't do this I'm decided. Okay, so Dara, yeah. as an international student, what do you think about the weather? Do you think it rains a lot? It does rain a lot. It just doesn't bother me. So I get why people would say it's like overwhelmingly rainy, but yeah. I don't find it like... When I think of off. England, I'm yeah. like, yeah, this is rain. Rain. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ekra, what would you say? Back me up on this. It doesn't rain that much. Honestly, I'm going to back you. Thank it's you. Manchester. Yeah. Like, there's, obviously, there's rain. I don't think it's the worst. When you're coming from, like, maybe hotter countries, it might be a bit of a disappointment. But I think the rain's nice. Perfect. It adds to, like, the vibe of the campus. Mm. Like, I don't feel like, yeah. the vibe, like the vibe is very, like, rainy, a bit, like... What's dark spooky? academia. Yes, I was literally about yeah. to say that. Dark you know. academia, yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a vibe there. So the rain works. Yeah, okay. Time I to said you're trying to convince me. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to like jam, <laughs> okay. just like stare you down. It doesn't rain that much. Well, congrats, guys. I guess, you know, you are pretty pretty good at what you do. And maybe that maybe that just, you should have all got, well, you've just gra- you both graduated. You should get a first for that, just from <laughs> your participation. Hope you're hearing that exam board. <laughs> yes, I hope you're all hearing that because Dara deserves that first. Okay, so that concludes our quiz, but I want to know what scores you get. Do let us know in the comments. But we're going to cut again to our roaming reporter, geography student, Aidan Road, who attended Blue Dot Festival this year and created a video chatting to festival goers. We'll be back soon with another interview and more content. It's another glorious day at Jodrell Bank, which is the University of Manchester's Centre for Astrophysics and the location of the Blue Dot Festival every year. About 15,000 people here today exploring the festival, checking out the booths, eating the food, getting stuck in the mud. So let's go meet them and see what kind of a festival they're having. I'm 
Gemma, and uh, we're with the Dalton Nuclear Institute. Um, from the University of Manchester. We're just here talking about um, graphene and all the things that it can be used for. I'm here with the Earth and Solar System team from the University and we've got our space rock stall in here. I'm here with the James Webb Space Telescope. So, so we're showing off some of the images that we've got from Webb. I really didn't know much about Blue Dot before coming. I just wanted to watch pavement. Uh, <laughs> and then it turns out, oh, it's a massive science festival, brilliant. And if people come by to your stall, what can they expect to get involved with. We've got some uh, Geiger counters so you can me measure radiation in everyday objects um, and an atom smasher, um, a Lego model of a nuclear reactor and some microbes. We have um, meteorites for people to look at, samples of the moon, samples from Mars. You can come by, peel some graphene for yourself, make some monolayers, have a look under the microscope and uh, chat with us about all the applications. And here's one you prepared earlier. A model of this sort of idea. So each of these little black spots on here yeah. uh, are carbon atoms. And we are, have got a variety of activities today which are basically testing your physical strength. So here we have a grip strength machine. Okay. And we'd like to, you to test your grip strength. Okay. Okay. Is it off? I think so. Yeah. 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 All right. Three, two, one. Go. One, two, three, four, Five and stop. Okay. Okay, and we have 49. That's actually a really good score <laughs> for a 20 year old. What's a typical score? Um, for someone around your age, it's yeah. probably around 30 kilos. <laughs> So it's a big opportunity for kids to come along and show that their parents yeah, are weaker than them. We get some very competitive families <laughs> and it's, it's okay. very funny, but it's real good fun. So come along and, and yeah. try it out. present the springy majiggy. This is Mrs. Chimey Wimey, Benjamin Balathon. This is the twisty bat phones. And you built all of these instruments that we're surrounded by? I built all of these instruments, yes. These are my, my friends who I have nurtured for 10 years. So how are you guys uh, finding the festival? What's been your highlight so far this year? Not the mud. Not the mud? A band called Opina. They absolutely rocked Nebula. Yeah on Friday night. Oh, I'm sad I missed it. A kid. A kid that came by and just absolutely fell in love with the store, wouldn't leave, wanted all the stickers. And I bet that was probably his highlight as well. I, yeah, hopefully it'll be an astrophysicist in the future. You never know. It's been really great. We've had some really great crowds, uh, particularly yesterday, despite the weather. Someone gave me a VIP ticket for some reason. <laughs> what? Uh, the highlight for me, I think, was being, for me personally, was being on the note stage and with uh, with Chris Hawking. Bless you. For, and uh, we did a talk to an audience there, very engaged and informed. Oh, Audience, so a warm shower in the morning. Yes, very true. Very, are you staying here overnight and everything? As well? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to embrace the mud, otherwise it will embrace you. I met Matilda, Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton's here. So. She was yesterday, and I said, "Hey, Tilda, nice to meet you. I'm Dylan. How you doing? I'm going for an audition on Tuesday. Any tips? Do you all know what a tip was? Yeah. Just have fun." I just like the whole atmosphere and you get so many different visitors. Most people don't get an opportunity to see the moon or Mars and never mind hold it. Very so true. Blue Dot's Blue Dot. It's very unique. Um, can you convey your, your highlight of the festival so far? Yeah, music. Would you say you're more of a music fan or more of a science fan or a bit of a... Oh, that's a tough one, that. I'm uh, not exactly down with the kids, so some of the music <laughs> is, is, is new to me. Yeah. But I'm enjoying that, that new music and the energy of the younger generation here, absolutely. I think I'm equal in both, because I think one lends itself to the other quite well, personally. And yeah. I think we need that balance. We need to strike that balance of the sciences and the arts a lot more to enable creativity and innovation. I do take inspiration from science. These instruments need a little bit of thought and uh, physics to kind of make them. I really like it, getting people interested and excited about science. Yeah. Too many people think science is hard and science is not for them. Yeah. It's not true. Everyone can do it. And we've just been into a really interesting talk about, um, about the sun and the solar flares. It was absolutely incredible. We really enjoyed the mix of the music and the science stuff. But I think the mud is what people will talk about. Yeah. And it's also memorable because you won't be able to get it out of all your clothes for several years. And the tents will be there forever. <laughs> do you know why Blue Dot is so cold? 
So cold. So cold, as in why it's cold blue dot. Oh, right. <laughs> so cold. So freezing here. <laughs> is it Earth? We're a little blue dot in the universe? Pale blue dot suspended on a sunbeam. Of course, Carl Sagan. In little blue dot. Just like so. Neptune. Or Uranus. Yeah. Well, not mine. They, they cut out the pale bit, but they kept the blue dot. Yeah, yeah. It works. The so I had the privilege and pleasure of meeting Carl Sagan, who coined the term the blue dot, and he came to New Zealand for Halley's Comet. I would say it's the single most important um, impact on my life for, for how I see the world. I've got a couple of little like, science-y riddles and questions for you, which you might be able to help me out with. What did Isaac Newton do? Isaac Newton? <laughs> by volume, how much dirt is there in a hole that measures two by three by four meters? So we've got two by three by two times three times four, so that's 12, 24 meters cubed. It's a hole, there's no dirt at all. Oh, <laughs> that's so Isaac Newton he gave us. Um... From a scientific point of view, what is actually the best superpower to choose, given the question? The best superpower would probably be mindfulness. Hmm, that's a very blue dot answer. You know Kirby? Uh, yeah. That big pink ball thingy, but Bobby. Yeah. I think the ability to be Kirby and suck up carbon from the atmosphere and. <laughs> what did the angry electron say to another atom when it got repelled? Let me at him. Lovely. And are you currently at the University of Manchester? Are you a student? I am, yes. Yeah, I've just finished my PhD. Congratulations. Yes. Do you have any advice for any incoming, like, first-year undergrads who are coming in in September who don't know about university life? Stay curious, stay imaginative, say yes to most things. Yeah. I think the best advice I was ever given for my degree was never leave a day with something you don't understand. Get out there and explore what the university can offer to you and as well as all the societies, all the activities that can be done in the university. And Manchester is a great city, so much to do, so much to see. Top tip, if you want to get to know the city, I did Scranchester food tour recently. Scranchester, okay. Yeah. The Vulture Oyster, just go for it, do it. Do you have any advice? Oh, for me, um, I would say um, pace yourself. Stay sane. Work-life balance matters. <laughs> Very um, good advice. Yeah. And finally, if you could describe Blue Dot in three words, what would they be? Science, modern music. Eccentric. Inspiring. Fun. Little bit crazy. Open-minded. Enlightening. Diverse. Squelchy. Curious. Inspired. Kind. Pop. Memorable. Creative. And whip. Nice noises. Chime. Squatchy pop chime. I like Squatchy it. Pop chime. I like it. It's got a good ring to it though. Worth the mud. Worth the, the mud. Yeah. Those are the three words. <laughs> <laughs> Worth the mud. <laughs> well, what a day we've had at Blue Dot today. The weather's held up, the mud has enveloped some people and never to be seen again, but they'll get over it. If you want to check out more information about Blue Dot, check out the link in the description below and we hope to see you there next year. I mean, I might have to take back what I said about the rain because it looked muddy. Dara, you went to Blue Dot, didn't you? Yeah. You don't seem you don't seem too happy about that. It was just like unexpected amount of mud. I've never experienced that. Like in my country, even yeah. though we're rainy, I think like the mud factor is well taken care of there. That's the only difference. Yeah, because you study you study masters. Of, let me get this right because yeah, take it's, your a time. Of, it's a bit of a it's title. A masters of research and cognitive neuroscience and neuropsychology. Yes, you get you've got used to saying that. Yeah, just like masters of cognitive neuroscience and neuropsychology. Boom. Boom. Um, but you didn't study your undergrad here, did you? No, I did not. But we do have a clip we're about to show of you celebrating something. Ah, Take okay. a look. Hey, Dara, Tasha, it's Lena, you look fine. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can see it! Oh my god! Wow! Ah! Yeah. Ooh, you get it, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember how that felt? Yeah, I think like. So actually, I saw the email at 3 a.m., but I was in denial for hours on end. I was like, I did not see that. And then I like was like, okay, maybe if I put it on the laptop and I show my parents. And when they saw it, is when it hit me. I was like, oh, wait, I did get it. How long did you wait then to open it? So 3 a.m., that looks like the that daytime. That was like 9 a.m. How did you wait that long? Because I was in denial. <laughs> you were like, I haven't got in, I haven't yeah. got in, I don't want to open it. Yeah, I remember the exact feeling because for a lot of our, um, 
new undergrads for our freshers the I, I my year was the first time where UCAS didn't I don't know did you have to no. open it through UCAS so what happened was they had to queue people to get onto the site so I was quite early I think mm. I only had to wait five minutes but I know people who waited half an hour to get onto the site because UCAS infamously crashes so I hope none of you had that experience today so you're from where are you from I'm from Trinidad and Tobago it's an island in the Caribbean and First of all, how was your experience of moving to the UK? And did you have any culture shocks? I feel like I'm always curious. We've heard about the weather, we've heard about meal deals. Yeah, what was my culture shock? Um, what was my culture shock? I think it's just the way you all say things like scran. Okay. And squash. And it was just interesting to like learn some of the slang because like my British friends use a lot of slang. Okay. And I'm just like, how are we speaking the same language? Yeah, <laughs> I suppose it's just, it's just ways of saying things. Yeah. Have you picked any up? Would you say you've incorporated any British slang into your everyday vocabulary? Stood and sat. Yours, y'all use stood and sat incorrectly, no offense. And, and what is in we flip them around? Yeah, okay. Like, I've been stood Picking here. Picking it up on the, yeah. on the grammatical. And I didn't realize I did it until I called my brother one day and I said something about I've been sat. And he immediately started laughing at me and making fun of me. He was like, you've been there 10 months and now you're British. You're British, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, please. Please don't. I'm still, I'm still from I'm Trinidad. I'm still Trinidad. Yeah. Um, did you join any societies or Ah, uh, Yeah, uh, so I joined the International Society and that has been fun. I enjoy taking myself out on little dates just to spend time with myself because I'm all about self-growth. And so I've been to Church Castle in Wales, I've been to Windermere, I've been to York and a few other places. So I really enjoy going to the International Society because I feel like as a tourist, these aren't places I would consider visiting. Yeah, I suppose some of them is, well, maybe the one in Wales particularly is quite remote, yeah. I presume. Yeah. York is, you can get to yeah, York you can get by the train. train. Yeah, yeah. So, International Society has been a lot of fun for me just to like expose myself to different environments because I've met like a lot of working class locals who I guess I wouldn't really get to meet because I'm yeah, usually yeah. like on campus and stuff. So it's nice to meet people who are like, m like everyday people. Yeah, and I suppose also know your experience of being an international student. Yeah. Would you say you struggle to, because there is sometimes a lot of people have this perception that home students, mm -hmm. what I call home isn't just people from, from the UK. UK and then international students mm -hmm. are quite divided and there isn't a sense of community between them. What's been your experience of that? Mm, I've had two experiences with it. Like a good few of my friends are British. So I'm very, cl I'm very close with my class. Like I really love them. But I've also had experiences where, yeah, I do feel that divide where it's kind of like people, like British people seem to stick to them their themselves sometimes. And I guess that's normal. Yeah. So it's, I've never felt offended by it. I'm just like, oh, well, yeah, it would make sense. Um, so yeah, I, I would say I've experienced both. Yeah, but would you say you're settled here now? Oh yeah, I love yeah. here, like Manchester is home. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad. What's been your highlight of your time here? So you, when did you move to the UK? Uh, it's the end of August last okay, year. Okay, so yeah. what's been your highlight since August? Oh, it's coming up to a year, isn't it? Yeah. Being in the UK, what's yeah. been your highlight? Oh, that's hard. I feel like I've had lots of highlights. Um, oh, what is a highlight? I think spending... You always get up to so much. Yeah, like, you, you see my social media, so you know. I think for me, it was spending Valentine's Day with, like, my girlfriends here. Like, it was so cute. We went for mini golf, and it was just, like, a girls' night out. And it was nice to feel like I found my community. Because oh. I feel like I didn't have a sense of community yeah. back home. Whereas here, yeah, like, I've met more people with similar interests to me. And... It was just very nice and wholesome. Um, other highlights have been working as a content creator here. Like I feel like I've gotten to hone my skills as a content creator. Yeah. And I see it as a very real new field instead of me just sticking to neuroscience or psychology. Um, You've di diversified your skills. Yes, set. I have. I've taken up extra certifications mm. while I was doing my master's as well in content creation. So that was fun. Um, what else would I say? I have so many. Yeah, like, I have those no, two. definitely. Yeah. Have you? Would you say then you found your people? Just talking yeah, about definitely. Yeah. Like I love. I absolutely love people from Manchester. Like they are very proud people. They're very friendly, which I've not really experienced in the south. Um, I just yeah, I love it. Good. What's your favourite spot on campus? Let, me and Tabitha disagreed with this. We had oh a little God. bit of an, well, not an argument. That's that's a bit too extreme. Yeah. What would you say is your favourite spot? 
My favorite is spot on campus. Oh, let's, like, actually, let's do a few. Um, maybe let's do to study and then mm -hmm. let's just do to study because I feel like some people come onto campus to do, you know, go to societies mm -hmm. or, um, you know, all sorts of things, maybe to study. I feel like I'd want to know this because there's so many buildings here that you can just go in and literally just work. What would you say your favorite spot to study is? Room This three. is so, are you, are you try, like, because do, do you want people to book this room up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to graduate soon, so oh, to be fair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I lose nothing here. Okay. Room three, main library, has such a dark academia, like, Slytherin vibe. Okay. It's so, it just puts you in a mood like, yes, I'm doing work today. Yeah, um, I'm an academic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I believe in myself. Yeah. Um, there, and then, like, room three or seven and Ali G okay. has such a beautiful view of um, the Whitworth as well as like Sam Alex and stuff. So yeah, it feels okay. very CEO. Yes, yeah. in your big chair, <laughs> yeah. typing on your laptop. <laughs> Do you have any favorite spots in the city? I feel like that's that's. Ooh, good, yeah, I have a, a good, good few actually. Um, I love Richmond's Tea Room. Okay. They have our Alice in Wonderland themed tea place. I absolutely love going for tea. Um, my mom's actually coming to see me soon. Oh, so I'm lovely. gonna take her for tea. Yeah. Um, I love Satan's Hollow. <laughs> That's just like a spot where people go to listen to rock and alternative. Oh, cool. And I'm an emo girl at heart. Um, that's two. Where else do I like? I like the Wellington. It's very cute. Um, the Whitworth Park and all the art galleries. Got a I lot of art. recommendations. Yeah, I know. Like, I look. Oh, and you know what? Bridgewater Hall. Take advantage of the tickets there because as a student, you only pay three to five pounds. That's great. So I've been to the orchestra multiple times. You yeah. feel, I feel like you've really, you just, you, you are, you are home I'm in Manchester. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you found your place here. Thank you so much. No I, I've learned a lot, especially from the spots in Manchester. Um, we're now going to go back to our roaming reporter, Aidan, who this time spoke to our new graduates at graduation. Hello, my name is Blake Crompton. I just completed my MCHEM Masters of Chemistry with industry experience, so I did a year in industry. I'm Damien, and I studied uh, maths with financial maths, masters. I today graduated with a PhD in chemistry. Congratulations. Thank you very much, thank you. How do you feel? I feel amazing. I would say it is a sublime day. I'm deeply moved, and um, I'm grateful to the university for giving me this fantastic opportunity. Uh, it feels surreal, to be honest, because I didn't think I could graduate, but thank God I did. <laughs> How does yes. it feel? Uh, a relief. I'm <laughs> glad it's over. But that sense of accomplishment is well ingrained there. Like I remember when I saw my degree grade online, when I was checking in, I just went, I just screamed and I kicked everything in the garden in celebration, you know, kicking the air in celebration. Because it has been, it has been hard. It's been rewarding though. There's nothing good in life is easy and the sense of achievement. This is why I did chemistry, because nothing in life brings me that sense of actual achievement than this. So what were the biggest challenges that you overcame to get here? Um, honestly, studying this course was really tough for me, but I'm really glad that I put, got through. And I just think like for any students that will come in here who's taking this course as well, just trust the process because that's what I did and I graduated. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Dealing with rain was a difficult part, um, <laughs> but I'm waterproof now, so Excellent. it's all fine. Yeah. Whenever I, I go back to Manchester, it just feels like I'm home. Like, Surely it's yeah. not the weather. No, not the weather, <laughs> not the rain. Thank God it's sunny today. So. I know, you guys got really lucky today because yeah. it's been raining all week. Well, we're Spanish, well, we're so, Spanish so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's the people, to be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. If, you, if you surround yourself on a, with, with good, good people, people yeah. you're going to have fun either need. way. Yeah. 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 The sunshine within. Yeah, yeah exactly. literally. What made you choose Manchester in the first place? I've only been to Manchester once before I got my degree here. Wow. And like, coming here, it's like coming to a new city and yeah. I fell in love like gradually with the city. Manchester is one of those cities that every six months it changes. Very exciting, there's a lot to do. Yeah, what was your like go-to place? This year it was probably Yes or Blue's Kitchen. Yeah, those are good, yeah. good choices. Yeah. So Northern Court is quite good. Yeah. yeah. We had Revolución de Cuba. Revolución de Cuba, yeah. Nice. Which is like Wednesdays. on Wednesdays. Yeah. I, maybe we go out today. Hey, <laughs> right? it is a Wednesday. I always meet new people. Every time I go out, I always meet someone new. I can always talk to different people. I can always count on that sense of, if I want a fresh idea, 
there is someone out there to help me with it. So Manchester is one of the biggest universities in the UK and I liked the vibe and for the PhD it provides fantastic opportunities and the city is great because there are lots of nightclubs, lots of nice cheap places to eat and it's just a nice student city now. But then you're not too far from the Peak District and that kind of thing if yeah. that's what you're into. One of my mates would go borderline monthly up to like the uh, Lake District just oh, wow. like take up I think like a coach down, enjoy like the weekend and then come back up. So yeah, if, if that's if that's what you're into, it's yeah, yeah it's great for that. What are your memorable field trips or anything that you went on? I went to Hong Kong for my field trip. Hong Kong? Yeah, amazing. I mean, it's an experience you're probably never going to get again, especially yeah. when the university subsidised it as well. So. <laughs> that that was nice. a... How about society-wise? So you said that you were the head of Chemistry Society. I was the president of Chemistry Society this year. I've been the inclusion officer before. One of the societies I joined was the University of Manchester Barbershop Singers. I worked for the Mancunian as a music oh, journalist. Right. I did horse riding equestrian. Oh, nice. Yeah. Played football for the chemistry team, actually. And I was a member of the swimming club. Other than that, I was in a math sock, but most nice. mostly just went to the socials. Well, I was involved with the volleyball society oh, nice. and then with the math society. Yeah. Being inside this Malay society it made me feel closer to home. Society wise they, there is a lot you can do, there's a lot of opportunities and also the biggest enemy of the student I believe, not the alcohol, not the infrequency of the student payments, it's just free time. Don't waste time, either do societies or study hard but don't just sit in your halls and watch Netflix or something, mm -hmm. just like really don't waste time. Do you have any advice for, you know, prospective students who are just coming into their first year now and don't know what university life is like? Don't be afraid to ask for help because there will be always somebody who can explain situations or concepts to you um, better yeah. uh, than in lectures, for example. Um, and also, um, I learned personally a lot of independent work and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it, that I can work independently. I'd say take your time, um, yeah. maybe do a bit of everything for a year, try to figure out what your interests actually are. Academic-wise, try not to fall behind. Yeah. That's usually a good advice. Uh, but if you do, the reading weeks are there to, for you to help, to catch up. I yeah. kind of stuck with my flatmates because we all got on, but branch out and make as many friends as possible, I'd say. Yeah, and it's nice to have sort of different bubbles, like your, your housemate friends and then your society friends and then, like, other yeah. friends from your course. Follow University of Manchester on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, follow, I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> follow uh, Students' Union so, um, profiles on yeah. social media because this is where you find all the updates on the gigs and all the important information, especially for the Freshers' Fair, etc. etc. Because also first year is the like year to yeah. uh, try all of them because then it's true that last year is it's a bit yeah, more busy, busy so but like there's no contractual obligation to actually like do the society oh, like no. if you don't no, like no, it no, you no. can just, just do it for do a few weeks like. yeah. and also make the most of um, the international community in Manchester get out and meet people because I've got friends from all over the world now so and that's great when you're visiting them and yeah, traveling exactly. the world great holidays, so. <laughs> did you have any like standout members of staff who really made you feel at home when you first got to university he was one of my math lecturers and he had a zeal for life and a zeal for maths that was contagious. My God. Like, everybody else was doing their job, don't get me wrong, they did a good job. But like, he just had a certain zeal that just made coming to those lectures a lot more exciting. And they'd say, oh, I got him today. Good, today's a good day. So what's next? What are you going to now you've graduated? Um, I'm going to take some time off, but back in my home country in Malaysia. Nice. Nice. I'm carrying on with science. Um, okay. I am now a research assistant in the University of Liverpool. Did oh. some uh, job searching earlier this year and I got an offer, but then I didn't really like it, so okay. I'm now doing some more applications. The world is your oyster. Yeah. So you're going to like travel around a little bit, or are you going to just like try and get that position? Um, I'm spending the summer back home, taking okay. some time off. Are you, are you sticking around in Manchester? Are you moving on? I'm going to New Zealand. Whoa! Traveling. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a master's in London, nice. so I've not finished my studies, but... Yeah. And then after that, do you have any idea, or is it just like, see where the wind blows? See where the wind blows, Take what, go where the life takes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck with everything. Thank you so uh, much. And congratulations again on graduating. Thank you. Of course, we'll be back here yeah, yeah. Yeah, to visit. In sunny days, we'll check the weather. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and we'll be back. Any final words of parting wisdom for, for new students? You got in. Enjoy it. It doesn't start till September. You got a bit. You got a bit of time. Relax. And even when it starts, do your work. Don't get me wrong. But also, enjoy life. Enjoy. <laughs> 
We're back. So now let's flip the script a little bit. We've had Jacob being an amazing host and asking us some brilliant questions, but now we're going to ask you. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with nice and simple. Just tell us about yourself. What do you study? Who are you? Hopefully I can answer that one. I feel, I feel a bit intimidated now. <laughs> um, so I'm Jacob and I'm going into my second year studying history and French, which feels crazy. The fact that you're almost at the end and you've both graduated and I've literally like, Just I remember that. results say not as if it was yesterday because it feels so long ago, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's me. Okay, amazing. Well, we're going to start with some quick fire questions. So, Abita, do you want to go first? Yes. So, I feel like we talked a lot about favourite spots um, in Manchester and around campus, but we focused a lot on studying. So, maybe we can ask you, what's your favourite spot in Manchester just to chill? That is a good question. I would say there's a lot of good independent coffee shops in Manchester. I'm just a big coffee person. Mm -hmm. I'm not a tea drinker, so I love I love my coffee. So I'd say if like that's kind of a chill spot for me. Also, take advantage of all the like museums and art galleries in Manchester. Definitely. Like Manchester Museum opened well, it's, it's not recently, like semi recently. Mm -hmm. um, the Whitworth, like Manchester Central Library sometimes has exhibitions. I feel like I'm gonna be missing out ones. I feel like they're my like chill spots. Um, yeah. Amazing. Okay, great. So you just told us that last when you found out about results, it does feel like a while ago. Can you dredge up some memories and tell us your freshest week experience? Oh, I feel like you're making me feel old. Like, <laughs> I feel like been, it's strange because I'm like coming back today. I'm like I've been here for a year. Yeah. Um, my freshest week, very overwhelming. I think everyone can everyone finds freshest week overwhelming. Yeah. Like you, like Ikra, you probably found freshest week overwhelming, even though yeah. you've been here. Yeah. Like it's. It's a change, we always say it's a change from being in Manchester than being on campus. Like it yeah. feels so, so different. And I can't imagine someone that's like moved out, like yeah. that, that feeling, it's definitely intense. Um, so overwhelming, very busy. Mm -hmm. I think like just generally my tip would be actually just to occupy yourself. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of intro events from my course. So I do history and French. So I had the history and intro events and the French intro events. Mm -hmm. um, I would say also like just meeting so many people. You will introduce yourself a hundred times. You will be like, my name is blank and I study blank. I'm from blank. Like yeah. you will say that at least 50 times a day because everyone's just looking to make new friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, just busy. It feels like a blur. Honestly, it just feels like a blur. It will go so fast. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, so you've probably shared quite a lot of tips throughout just talking, but what is like your top overall tip for new starters? Oh, my top overall tip. I would say don't worry if your learning experience takes time like mm -hmm. don't worry if your whole your whole first year can just be a learning experience not just about learning how to do the university academia kind of thing but also just like, if you've moved out of home that's a whole nother thing mm -hmm. learning how to do your food shop because I've watched my parents do the food shop and they make it look so easy. And I'm there <laughs> in Lidl, like thinking in my head, like, okay, on Tuesday I'm having this, on Thursday I'm having this, Wednesday I'm having leftovers, you know, budgeting. So you need to, I feel like just give yourself, give yourself a break. You, yeah. you like, you will learn so much over the course of your first year and it's not just education wise. Yeah, that's I think so that's such a good tip. But and now because you finished your first year, um, of university. I think uh, it's a really nice question to ask you what was your highlight of the year? Because oh. I think a lot of things changed for you yeah. just coming to university. Um, okay, I'd say I have two highlights and the second one, you're, some of you might look at me and be like, what on earth? So <laughs> I feel like my first highlight was my flat Christmas dinner. So in my actual flat, I had nine people, but in the accommodation I was in, each floor had two flats. Um, so there was about 15 of us in this kitchen and we all took a little bit of the Christmas dinner each to make and that was just good vibes. We were there for like four or five hours. Just, it was such a lovely evening. And I feel like that's when I knew like this is my place. I feel like I knew that once I started my course as well, but I was like, this is the place for me. And then on, this, on a similar note, I would say this sounds so strange, but I had a week, my assessment period was almost really, really short. I had three essays due in one week and an exam in that week as well. Mm -hmm. But that week I was like, I knew I made the right choice with this course. I was sitting there in the main library, not in blue one, <laughs> <laughs> not in blue one, um, writing my essays, revising my exam. And I was like, this is the place for me. Like, I know I made the right choice in my course with the city. That would be my two highlights. Nice, okay. So um, 
you said that you like to go to cafes as yeah, your yeah. like spot, right? And I mentioned that I like to go to like say Santa Hollow or for tea, and that's more like evening time. Yeah. So what do you like to do in the night or on the weekend? I would say I feel like this is I learned that I'm I do like a night out, but I also I'm a very much like a night, night in, in person. person yeah. If I had to choose a night out, I would say don't want to gatekeep it, but I do really like Funkademia in the Northern Quarter. It's just like a good vibe. But I also would say if you're living in Fallowfield, definitely venture down into Withington and East Didsbury. There's loads of good pubs. Um, yeah, I would say I'm a very like chill person, but I do like a night out. So mm-hmm. that would be that would be my a kind of ideal night out. Everybody needs balance. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. Um, so as a Mancunian myself, and you're now an adopted Mancunian, oh, we do claim you. I have to ask, what would you say is the best thing about Manchester? This is this is probably the most difficult question. Mm-hmm. I would say the highlight of the city is this really cringe if I say the people. No, I say it. Uh, say it. <laughs> um, I would say the people. I feel like I feel very much at home here. Um, like I feel like I really found my group of friends and. I feel like I've really settled and that's a lot to do with the people and the people yeah. I've met. I would also say I just love the city for, this sounds very clunky, but just its buildings. I just like the vibe of Manchester yeah. as a city. I'm a, I come from like a small village and coming to Manchester, I wanted to come to a big city and like just walking around and seeing all the buildings and like campus, campus has this quite old architecture. And then you go into the city, you see these high rise buildings. If you're taking the tram to Media City, like you see all these high rises. Yeah. So I'd say they're my two favorite things about Manchester. Love that. Yeah, it's such a diverse city. Um, we've also got a question from the chat that we're gonna talk about. Um, so someone's asked what our recommendations are about getting jobs and working outside of studying. Um, we can probably carry that first because we actually worked together. We were on um, the library student team. So we worked at the university. Mm, yep. And we were based in, well, the building's called Alan Gilbert Learning Commons, but everyone calls it Ali G. Yeah. Um, so we were there and we were pretty lucky to find that balance because we worked in a study space. But I would say even if you don't work on university, dedicate time to being in a study space because you'll feel more motivated to work, mm-hmm. is my advice. Yeah, I would say with jobs, my piece of advice would be take advantage of what the university offers first of all. So we yeah. have Job Shop. Job Shop from the SU and also Career Connect. I would say also there is a lot of um, like independent places, mm-hmm. and a lot of the time, what you can literally just do is go in and give them their C- give yeah. them, give them your CV. Definitely. I've not personally done that, but I know that that is a possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, but also just like stick at it. I think yeah. that Manchester is a big city, and there is a lot of people applying for jobs. But if you stick at it, you will find a job. You work. We both work. For the uni. Yeah, for the uni, and I also have another part-time job. How have you found balancing it? Um, Well, I guess for me, balancing it hasn't been hard because I know what I'm willing to put into work hours to balance with uni. So I don't like ever overestimate myself and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do 20 work hours this week. (laughs) You know, so I think it's like very much a big question of knowing what you can handle and what the job allows you to do, because some jobs like require you to work a certain amount of time, yeah. whereas other jobs are more lenient in understanding that you are a student. Um, I think the only actual other advice I have kind of on this topic is I chose something that gave me the freedom to switch fields. Oh, okay. So yeah, I feel like when choosing a part-time job, and I talked about this on my LinkedIn, try to choose something where you're either going to get soft skills that you could transfer to mm-hmm. the workspace when you leave uni, because you know they're always asking for work experience. <laughs> you just jumped out of uni, um, as well as like just being open to like what that job might offer. Because I have a friend, I think he did his like bachelor's in finance, but he was also working at a bar as a barista, and he did competitions for the. Um, but he worked at and now he's like managing an entire yeah. bar instead of doing like finance. So I would say make sure your part time, whatever you choose is something that like could help you deviate or add to your work experience when you start applying for jobs after uni. Yeah. And I would also reiterate about the working hours thing is zero hour contracts are actually really good because you just sign up for when you want to work yeah. and then just know your limits. I completely yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So to summarize, I say get used to 
sadly coping with rejection (laughs) a good job comes in time um and then also if you have the privilege to work less hours and be flexible around your studies definitely stick to that Mm -hmm. i think that's a good way to put it um so we're going to cut to our roaming reporter who's going to ask fellow students why they chose manchester just so you can get a sense of what life is like here why did you choose manchester university um okay um the fact that it's in the north I don't actually know. When I came here, I just had a feeling, and it's quite hard to describe. I liked how integrated it was. I didn't want to go to like a smaller city, but I wanted to leave London, so I thought Manchester was the best option. I really liked the city, and it was more for that than anything else. Because it's like big city, the queer scene. Big city as well. I wanted to be somewhere quite busy. I heard really good things about the city. I wanted to go to a city that was full of life. I think Manchester <laughs> is that city. It's up north, it was cheap. The student community, like the societies, the student union, like is, it does stand out compared to other unions, in my opinion. What societies are you part of? I'm in a uh, Paul and Burlesque society. There's something for everyone. When I went to visit here and saw the accommodation and saw how like involved it all was, that's what I liked about it. I never visited it. I just kind of <laughs> chose it and hope for the best, really. So I, look, I, I looked at the modules as well, and they were modules that I liked. For ID psychology, I think it's pretty decent for I didn't really look at like leak tables and things because they're not that like no. take it as you will type thing but I think Manchester's yeah. a top uni for like most of the degrees anyway like yeah. ID criminology I think it's a top employer for there so yeah Euro abroad was amazing definitely recommend to anyone do a Euro abroad if you can it's the best thing obviously the rain really drew me in <laughs> yeah. and are you happy with your choice yeah 100% yeah yes. definitely definitely but well, I'm definitely glad I came to Manchester yeah I'm now joined by quite possibly the best guest I've ever talked to or the best thing I've ever seen, which is Barnaby, our B mascot. Hello. Well, I mean, I guess this is kind of awkward. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, I don't know about you, but I actually just can't hear anything coming out of this bee's mouth. Um, do you have a favorite thing about Manchester? Okay, I guess Barnaby likes Manchester. I, I actually just give up, I give up. Well, it was, it was nice to have you. So to sign us off, we're gonna have some music from Fuse TV's recent DJ set from the roof of the Schuster building. Fuse TV is the university's TV station that anybody can volunteer with once they start. They're part of Manchester Media Group, which also involves the student newspaper, the Mancunian, and the student's radio station, Fuse FM. We have a short clip of the set, but you can also watch all 40 minutes on Fuse TV's YouTube channel. Before we show that, a massive congratulations from me and the rest of the university. Do let us know if you have any questions. You can send us a DM on Instagram or join us on TikTok at 245. Both are at official UOM. Thanks again for watching. Bye.